Good morning, everybody. It's Alex. And guys, you woke up to a beautiful day because we've got six major earnings reports to take advantage of. So stick with me here. I'm going to show you how to trade them all and we're going to get right into it. So what are the six major earnings reports? Well, we've got SPLK, Snow, and Okta. What is the major importance there is that these are all cloud stocks and all cloud stocks this season have been dropping after earnings. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Zscaler, CrowdStrike, these are both cybersecurity stocks and these are both behaving the exact same way so far. Look at them both gapping up, stalling out, gapping up, stalling out. Now, take a look at the volume characteristics. They're up, but not on crazy volume. Look, Zscaler, you just had great earnings. You released great great guidance and you're only up on 20k volume okay that's a little fishy there CrowdStrike you're up and actually they're on some decent volume right 104 grand okay they had great earnings great guidance everything okay so let's keep that in mind now why do we have five below okay this is a retail stock that could have very big correlation to uh, over here on Ulta tomorrow. Okay, so that video is scheduled for the afternoon at about 6 or 7 Eastern time. Okay, so be ready for that because we'll show you how to trade Ulta. That's going to be the best trade of the week probably and DocuSign. Now, this week is amazing. This day is amazing. Tomorrow is going to be even better, so get ready. Um, okay, now getting into how are we going to trade these, take a look at Okta. Okay, so this thing is up huge, right? But on 8,000 volume, guys, look at that. It's up 14 points on 8,000 volume. Super, super weak volume. Uh, not convincing move to the upside. And when you combine the weak volume in the pre-market with the fact, guys, that Okta has dropped or, or your best strategy has been shorting the bounce five out of the last six earnings, guys. Five out of the last six, guys. That's a super high base rate based on the last six. And so what does that give us? It gives us a huge bias to the downside, not because we feel like the earnings are bad or good or whatever we feel about the earnings, but because that's how the stock behaves. You okay, so guys, Okta is a bad boy, and he's given us our money today. And uh, yeah, he's going to pay pay his dues, and that's to us. Okay, so be ready to take advantage of that. We're expecting a bounce the most um, I guess the best example out of the last six earnings reports that I could come back to and show you as a as a good baseline of what we expect, right? See this gap up? Um, we're expecting the bounce, okay? And um, then we expect to short it, okay? Look at that. Um, you know, short the bounce, boom, it comes back down, okay? So look, I already told you guys yesterday, Okta has an average DTR of 12 based on the last six earnings, okay? And so based off that DTR, we can expect, look, look at that move, 120 down to about one. 08, 109, right? So look, that's perfect. Okay, so basically, once you identify the top, once you're in your short from the top, you shouldn't expect a crazy 20, 30 point move to the downside, but you should expect to get about 10, 12 points, okay? And so as you reach 10, 12 points, that's when you want to be getting out and securing some profits probably, or, or you know, not all, right? You don't have to secure all the profits, but some, okay? Okay, and guys, one very, very important thing I need to point out today, okay? The market's not moving. It's a complete, you know, just fucking nothing, okay? So you don't want to trade the market. That's why we're focusing on the earnings, which brings me into the next important point. If you're making a ton of money by, you know, about midway through the day, 11, 40, all right, 12 o'clock, you need to stop trading because what you'll do is after you're making a ton of profits, you're likely going to try and find something else. You're going to feel on a roll. You're going to feel unstoppable. You'll feel unbeatable. And you're going to try and go put this in some bad quality setup. And that's not what you want to do. You want to secure these profits. You want to walk away from your screen, go give your wife a hug, go for a run and have a great rest of your day. Okay. So now look, we've only gotten into Okta so far. Let's go ahead and get in some more. Now, one thing I want to point out is I'm not trying to be cocky here, guys. Um, you know, it's not any cockiness or over bold confidence here, but it's almost the formula. Okay. We notice all cloud stocks drop after earnings. Okay. So that's one part of the formula. And second, we notice weak volume. Okay. And so that's something we want to take advantage of. It's not being over cocky, but it's about being, you know, taking advantage of the circumstances you have. And so look, you can still be wrong, but we know we've got very high chances on our side. And so this is one of those days where you want to be a little more aggressive, right? Because you have the probabilities on your side. You have, you know, the, uh, what, how, how do you call it? The, the advantages on your side, okay? And so that's what you do. Some days you gotta be a little more aggressive and this is one of those days, okay? But you obviously gotta know what you're doing. You gotta be on point. So now we're getting into the next trade, which is snow. Once again, we've stressed this so much, but what are all cloud stocks doing after earnings? They're dropping. Now take a look at snow. It dropped and it's recovering, okay? Now look at that pattern. Now guys, let's bring up a few that really uh, resemble that pattern. Okay, so do you guys remember SE earnings, okay? This one was a really, really good trade the other week. Okay, look at this one drops recovers okay what does it do bounces at the open 
drop, okay? Keep that in mind, right? It's the same pattern of dropping and recovering by the open. Now let's go ahead and look at Netflix. Do you guys remember this one? Okay, I think we need to zoom out to 90 days. Okay, what did Netflix do after its earnings, okay? You can see here, it dropped, recovered by the open, and then boom, it drops again, okay, at the bounce, okay? So those are two really good examples that came to my mind when trying to find a similar pattern to this uh, snow, uh, you know, pattern we have in the pre-market. Okay, and so that's how I plan to trade it is shorting the bounce on snow as long as you don't see some crazy institutional buying um, as the market opens or anything, right? If there's some crazy spike out and, and buyers and just the things start skyrocketing, that's not how you want to trade it, right? But based off the pattern, based off what cloud stocks do, that's our most, you know, uh, I guess favorable uh, way to trade it is shorting the balance, especially if it continues to trade on weak volume. See, it's only on 77 grand volume, right? It's just kind of in the middle, so it hasn't really chosen exactly what it wants to do. This is the first earnings report in the history of snow, but once again, the, the factors are on your side when it comes to all cloud stocks dropping after earnings, all COVID stocks dropping after earnings, and on top of that, you have this nice little pattern that has really resulted in some great gains for us this year. Okay, so this is a familiar uh, you know, familiarity type thing here. It's not a statistical thing, right? But the pattern is definitely there and we've had a lot of success with it. Now, SPLK is on some crazy, crazy volume. And the important thing I want you to notice about this, look, 445,000 volume. Take a look at SPLK, guys. I want you to take a look at this, right? So, oh shoot, that's the, uh, the long chart. Okay, let's go look at SPLK. Now, it was at 205 yesterday. Where does it gap down to, guys? 162 that's not even on this chart it gapped down off the charts okay and so we don't even have any levels so let's go ahead and, and make sure we understand let's go data back to one year okay now look at where is our next level we gap below the bottom level 170 okay now we're at 164 Where's the next bottom level, guys? I don't know. So we're in new territory, and there could be a ton of downside here at this point. So once again, our bias, it, it remains to the short side on SPOK. Why? Because even though, yes, it's down 40 points, and it seems absolutely ridiculous, um, you know, some people are thinking, let's buy the dip here. We, we just want to short the bounces, right? I mean, why would our strategy change here when it's been such a dominant behavior in all cloud stocks? So once again, we want to short the bounce on SPLK. There's a reason they're selling out of this so hard. You'll notice, here's another great example, okay, of a stock that got completely shit on after earnings. Do you guys remember Intel? This thing dropped 20%. Basically, that's what SPLK has done is drop like, what, 20, 25%. So look at Intel's behavior after earnings. Do you remember when it gapped down 20% on some ridiculous volume? What happened? Puts at the open and it just continued lower. So yes, some people think, oh my God, it's discounted. Let me buy the dip. It's a bargain. Okay. But on the other hand, it's such a bad move to the downside. that it's very likely to continue lower, which brings us to our strategy on SPLK, shorting the bounces. Okay. Look at that. I mean, look, that's our strategy for all three of these cloud stocks. It makes sense, right? You've seen how, how consistent the behavior between the sectors been, and we'll just take advantage of that. And we know, well, Hey, if we shorted 10 cloud stocks after earnings, that's how we're going to win probably 8 out of 10 times. And so I'll take that every time, and that's how I'll trade these, okay? So shorting the bounces on Octa, shorting the bounces on Snow, as long as the volume's weak and you don't see some crazy institutional buying come in. Same with SPLK, right? As long as there's no crazy spike out in volume, we're shorting the bounces on all three, which gets me to our next two trades. And guys, we're shorting everything today. God damn it, we're shorting everything. Okay, CrowdStrike. Now, look at this. Okay, it's up on some decent volume, nothing crazy, right? This thing trades on, you know, 10 million volume, so it's nothing crazy here. It's just pretty average volume. And so look, they released amazing earnings, great guidance, everything is good, okay? But what you'll take a look at um, here on Crowd, okay, yeah, it gaps up. Let's go ahead and make sure that we can actually see this here uh, on the zoomed in chart. You gap up to about 158, already coming back down to that top level. So we'll see, are we going to use this as support uh, or resistance, this 155 level? Okay, but I'm waiting to really decide on this one. Um, so this is uh, going to be a situational reaction based off, you know, what you see as the day progresses. But I have a obviously a huge short bias, guys. Um, why? Because once again, all COVID stocks have been dropping, right? Which is huge. And so you'll see based off previous behavior for crowd, look, they actually typically drop after earnings. So look at that previous example there. Let's go ahead, zoom it back. Look at the next example here, right? Gaps up, drops. Okay, let's see if we can find one more. Gaps up, drops. Okay, so 
Uh, that's not a crazy move to the downside, but nonetheless, that's still the behavior. And what, um, 51 down to 46? Okay, that's like freaking 10%. Okay, so that actually is a big drop from top to bottom. Now look at the behavior. It bounces, then you short it. Okay, let's go to this next one here. Um, it bounces, then you short it. Okay, now let's go to the next example here. It bounces, not not really that much at the open, but then it, oh wait, shoot, that's that the other day. Okay, once again, here, look, this is the day of earnings, my bad. It bounces and it drops. Okay, so look, the last three times you see that's what crowd's done. And so although the level is very bullish, if we're going off behavioral patterns, that's how it behaves. And so look, you're a little iffy for now, but as you wait and see the volume and how the, the thing's trading after the market opens, then you can really make a more educated guess there. And so based off crowd, you can trade ZS, okay? And if you take a look at ZS here, um, let's take a look at it. Okay, ZS gaps up to 161, which is not exceeding its top level. So if anything, we'd probably be more bearish on Z Zscaler um, uh, instead of crowd, actually. But like really, crowd looks so bearish as well based off previous behaviors, right? So, you know, there's both ways to look at it. You can think crowd broke past its top level, so it's super bullish. And so if you don't feel comfortable with this one, you know, you, you do whatever you want, right? I'm just giving you my opinion, and my opinion can absolutely be wrong, um, but I do have a pretty pretty credible judgment i would say um but hey look at zs right 161 that's not the top level so we like this short as well it already hit 143 right um yesterday so look if it's at 161 you got lots of downside limited upside it would seem right you got up to about 165 of course it can break past right but we're just going off of how these things typically behave and that's exactly how these things typically behave so let's go ahead look at zs really quickly here okay let's go to 100 day um here Okay, what happens? Look, release earnings, they freaking bounce really hard at the open. Okay, then they drop really freaking hard after. Okay, now let's go to the next example. Look at this thing. Uh, no, nothing here. It just continues higher, right? So, you know, you got to decide for yourself. Um, but this was like a crazy good earnings. It gaps way past the all-time highs for the stock and goes higher, right? So that's like one of those bullish things we talk about. If you can gap past your all-time high, that's typically going to be a bullish, but crowd is this the all-time high for guys i'm not sure actually i think it is um but yeah so crowds at its all-time high and that's why it's actually more bullish um but today if we had to choose for zs it's definitely a short in our eyes and basically you'll see every single one of these is a short to bounce scenario um is at least of what i've got out of it right so look not to be over cocky but that is my plan for for the day and um you know just even if you initiated five shorts on all five of these I think you walk away today at least three for five on those, right? And um, yeah, I mean, that that's really all there is to it today, guys. So guys, take advantage. Once again, uh, I want to point out that you need to take profits. You need to walk away from your freaking trading if you're making some great money today. And um, that's how we do it. All right, so guys, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not, have your bell on. Let me know how you do. I'm super excited for this day. I think it's going to be a really good day. I mean, look at these shoot ups, right? And so when we know if this thing bounces and we short it, you're going to have a big move to the downside, just like YY, right? You guys remember YY? I mean, these are all just beautiful looking trades and I'm ready to take advantage of them. Okay. So like I said, come back, let me know if you got any questions and, um, Okay, and so lastly, super quick, guys, the, the important details you need to remember, Okta's got about a 10 to 12 point DTR on average. Um, ZS has got a lot of downside potential, okay, and Snow, guys, we just like this. I mean, we like them all. We like them all. They're all great trades. I don't think you can really go too wrong with any of them. Uh, maybe try a couple, maybe diversify a little, um, but hey, do whatever the hell you want. I think they're great setups, and I think we're all going to have a great day today. So guys, let me know how you do. Come back and just tell me how it goes or anything, guys, if you got any questions, of course, and so make sure you subscribe and have your bell on so you don't miss out on more days like this. Um, guys, looking forward to it. I mean, this just is just telling me like, hey, short the hell out of me. I'm about to come down after I bounce up here. Just like YY. It looks exactly like YY, guys. I just love it's something about the familiarity. And I, you know, sometimes familiar familiarity screws you up because it makes you think you know what you're doing. But, you know, things don't have to repeat themselves. But nonetheless, we know we've got a very good chance on our side. And so we trade with the high probability and well, that's how you win. Okay, so Take advantage. We'll see you guys on the next video. Drop a like if you haven't already. Goodbye.